So I stopped recording for a little while because I knew uh, this would take a, a while to do what I've just done. And um, I've, I've went through these techniques with you in previous chapters. So I'm just going to let you know what I've done. So we come from the pad sections of section over there. And we start here. And we left off over here. I just play, and uh, as I play, I'll I'll speak. So, introduction of what's coming with our chorus bass playing at the moment. A little bit of our main lead that it's gonna be on the chorus. So all these these four patterns. Which is about 60, 64 beats, or then make 64 beats. They're just uh, the chorus bass. But on the last one, like I've told you, well, I muted this so the attention is drawn for what's playing here. And I repeated this bit. Space. That's gonna be effects over there, feeling that bit. Where they make the lead mutes. On this part, I've just done half of what's there. Added a bit of delay. Repetition. So, this last one, this very last one, is just like a passage, and I made it repeat so much, and I, I have so many breaks on it because um, to make it sound a bit faster and more aggressive. Because uh, after this, we're gonna cool down after this uh, overload to the listener brain. We're gonna cool down with the with the big break here, and then blow blow again on the chorus. So I've just used basic used basic stuff here. So in almost all of them, as you can see, I only cut the bass on my first break. My second break, I've make it a bit bigger than my first one, cut the bass, repeat it, the kick there and the percussion, I've cut the percussion, shorten it and repeat it with the kick which gives that nice effect, I've done the same with the lead, shorten it and then repeat it on this second break I've, in, I've shortened the percussion, just left the kick there, and I've uh, reversed the, the lead so it gives that effect, that, that small effect, I've been through this, through the course. Uh, I've added crash, crash symbol and reverse symbol on almost all of the, the breaks, just to intensify the moment. Yeah, that's what we got. So, and now I'm gonna work on this break using the same concepts that I've been talking about, same techniques. delay that percussion so it doesn't die straight there and I'll see what I do with this lead if it kicks off right now or not but so far we know that this is gonna be a break and then we have we left the chorus in the end so I had to listen to the track again so to see where the chorus is gonna go and all that and I decided to put to add the pads and I, I want you to 
know every single move that I do on this track so I'm gonna share this with you as well uh, I've added the Pantanese parts <laughs> And if you notice, the pad is a bit bassier now because I've bypassed our Q filter that was inserted. See? And that, uh, that rising thing that you just heard was in the pad. I've added a bit of delay to make that last bit. I mean, if we listen to it raw. On this last bit. The pad changes, it pitches up. I add a delay to in fact in to make that part a bit more. So what I've done, I haven't used pitch. What I have used, and sometimes it works better than pitch, uh, this pad is, um, has got two oscillators going, and I've selected one of the oscillators in this case it's control 24, CC control change 24 which controls my second oscillator and if I show you on my Tetra there it goes, that's my second oscillator and you can see it changing there you go, there we go so this is one of the things you can do just to give that effect. You can pretty much do that with any MIDI channel. <coughs> so yeah, so that's the effect we got. And uh, I'm just gonna carry on with the track, carry on with that chorus part, see if I can finish this track and then do a chorus bit over here and maybe change some more leads. And the next chapter will be arrangement. So I'll be right back.